Hi, and welcome to the How to Play Darkest Dungeon video series, courtesy of GameWisdom.com. Welcome back, everybody. This is Josh Placer from GameWisdom.com. This is episode 3 of my How to Play Darkest Dungeon New Player's Guide. Last time we officially started the game with a run through a medium dungeon, met the Shambler for the first time, with expected results. But we're continuing our little journey here. Once again, if you have any questions or comments about the game, be sure to leave them in the comments below. So we have two new classes joining us, the Leper and the Houndmaster. We also got a new Jester here. The goal right now for this early game, once again, is we want to get the Guild and Blacksmith up and running. This will allow us to make our new characters who join us stronger and save us money in the long run with being able to cultivate characters cheaper and more effectively. The Sanitarium still hasn't been unlocked yet, but it should be, I think, unlocked by the end of this play. Anyway, we have a new area to try, the Weld. This is the beast and blight-ridden territory of the estate. It's also a really good place to get items and some much needed deeds, it looks like, for this run. We're going to be taking the Leper, our new Jester, and a Houndmaster, and the one we're going to take... I'm going to take Collier. Collier? Let's see, do we have anything that causes... That looks good. He has the Purge, which is Knockback. The Chop. He doesn't have Hue. But he does have Revenge, which is his buff. The buff, it's okay. But I find if I'm going to buff, I'm going to use the Jester's Battle Ballad for the plus accuracy, speed, and crit. And remember, that will stack three times, too. So let me see. He should really go here. She'll go there. And I think we are good. We can enhance their dodge a little bit because they're already going to be on the faster side compared to our other two. But Blight is the bigger threat here. Mm, not worth that at this point. It's a little bit risky taking her, she's already pretty high on stress. But we really don't have the room for anyone else. What I'm going to do is also show you how this works. Because I already upgraded one point here to reduce the cost, I'm going to unlock Bullion's Hue, which is his double, really his only real affecting AoE skill. He also has Withstand that gives him protection, and Intimidate, which is more of a debuffer than it is a damage, as you can see. Darkest Dungeon is one of those RPGs where it follows a common rule. It's better to kill an enemy than it is to weaken them. So, most of the time, it's better to pour on damage and try to deal with it, rather than trying to weaken an enemy. With some major exceptions, such as fighting bosses, and more dangerous, like, major targets, which you'll hopefully see in this video series. But I'm going to unlock you. Yeah. And we're going to take off... I'm going to say Revenge. I'll put on Hue. Remember, the Leper only works in the first two positions. He will not be useful anywhere else. And I think we're ready. Because each area has different threats and curios, it's going to affect what items you should take. Now the medicinal herbs, I believe, are coming from... the... Hellmaster? I believe, or the Leper. Here I'm going to take extra shovels. I'm going to take extra Anti-Venom 
and medicinal herbs because there are more events with those items. A few bandages for good measure. Key. I think we're good. We don't. There's one event that needs holy water to make it good, but it is rarer to find it, so I'm going to leave it alone. And again, just to be on the safe side, we'll take a little extra food and torches. And let's go. I always double check just to make sure I have everything that I need. Good. I would really, really like to get my hands on a occultist and a bounty hunter. They're two of my favorite classes and they have some really awesome combinations with the Houndmaster. Or even the Abomination would be good too. And hopefully by the end of the series we can at least look at all the classes. Corruption has soaked the soil. Complete 100% of room battles. These groves. Let us burn so out this, evil. this is a very simple one. We just keep going forward until we hopefully win. Nature herself, a victim to the spreading corruption. Okay. This one I believe we use bandages for. And that's just for me playing the game before. I already have scale of this part, so I don't need to worry. Now this chester will be a lot different than the one we used previously. This I believe we're using medicinal herbs. Yep. And we get extra food. Knowing what curios take what items is very important for surviving this game. And our first fight, there are some beasts, and they've been surprised. This shouldn't be too bad of a fight. Remember, the Hellmaster gets bonus damage against beast type enemies. Continue the onslaught. Destroy them. What I'm doing right now is setting these guys up for hopefully a kill by our leper. Be gone, fiend. Not too shabby, and we got some deeds from it. A trifling victory, but a victory nonetheless. We've already used two shovels, and we're not even <laughs> two rooms in yet. Not a good sign. Also, the Hellmaster has a greater chance of getting scouts, which is why we're seeing that here. Now this means we are going to be fighting. More spiders. And we're getting some lucky surprises. Another abomination cleansed from our lands. And I'm going to activate the battle bell. Buffs everyone up. Oh, so close. The spires are very dangerous if they are uh, comboing with their green variants, the spitters. He's been marked, but that's alright. We'll use this to boost our speed and accuracy even more. Back to the pit. And nothing too bad there. Seize this momentum. Mm. Push on to the task's end. This is more about blight, I think, than bleed, so we're good. Again, this is just me remembering this from last time. With loot are often low on supplies. But this was a very good quarter for goods for items. But we do have a fight here. Everyone's at good health. We can use our dog treats for a super boost. Oh, he has two now. I remember he used to only have one. Hmm. The question is, do I boost for this first round, or do I try and take some of these guys out? I think I'm going to try and get them out. Nice. The ground quakes. A crit on a damage over time skill will increase the duration. 
As you can see, it's five instead of the normal three. And here we go again. Do I try and kill one, or do I try and set up another one? I think we're going to try and take them out. He is now guaranteed to die, so I'm going to focus on this guy. And if she hits, we may be able to kill her. Perfect. So this one will die of bleeding. We will get hit by stress, unfortunately. If I had the other skill of the Jester, we could actually cure our stress. Don't move her. Good. Yep, that's fine. Hit him. Jeez. That does so much stress damage. In the later parts of the game, you really have to mitigate that. I am going to... You know what? Let's do a Battle Ballad. This will improve our speed and maybe our, ac and our accuracy as well. With these, you just want to take them down as quickly as you can. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. And now this is where Purge will come in real handy. Skills that clear all corpses will just destroy them all regardless of health. Now we'll do a move forward here, and the Hellmaster is just really good in most positions, which is why I like the class so much. That bleed, she's dead. Yep. And now I will get a chance of a heal, and we'll just try and top everyone off. Not too much, unfortunately, at this level. The slow death. Goodbye. Unforeseen. Not bad. Unforgiving. We're pretty much out of room, though. That's the only bad sign. I'm going to put this on him just so we can have the extra space. Again, he has zero dodge, so it doesn't really matter. Definitely want that. And the citrine... We're going to use this key. <laughs> Did we get a scale? Good. Okay, so we have a guarantee two fights. There is a chance this room does not have a battle in it. Alright, I'm gonna drop the gold, take the jade, use our key, give me some deeds. Aw. Alright. Uh-oh, wait, don't we have... Oh, we have one more shovel, thank you. Like I said, always take extra shovels. Let's make things inter interesting, shall we? Ugh, these guys are the biggest pains in the well. They're fast, they can cause rabies, and when they start critting, it is a colossal pain. They're also hard to hit, you know, just to add the point home. Whew. Thankfully, it didn't cause him rabies there, but we want to take him out. If it bleeds him, he's dead. Good. The reason why I'm hitting this one is I want the leper to hopefully get the kill. Executed the dog will purity. bleed to death. When the time comes, I will want to set up these characters with specific skills to synergize with each other. But right now, it's not really necessary. A little extra, move him back here. Now we do have a fight here. We'll bump it up to 50. Ah yes, ugh. Very nasty. This is going to be, I think, worthy of the dog biscuit time. They will bleed, but they're also very much protected, and this is why I took the Houndmaster. If we can deal with these two, life becomes a lot less complicated. Good. What I want to do, actually, 
is push these guys back as they are not effective in position 3 and 4. Two, so this one will die. Yeah, you know what? Let's dog biscuit this up. Do it, man. And now I will use Purge and hopefully knock this guy all the way to the back. Nice. Harmless Swipe is his weaker variant. It does less damage and has a less chance to hit. Groping Strike is their normal attack. Now, this one will die. I'm going to boost. Oh, stop targeting her. This will move them up. And we have a choice. I can attempt to stun or finish him off. Remember, the leper cannot target position three and four. Good chance. Yeah, the stress is more damaging than the damage right now. Blossoms. If I push him back, it will clear this corpse, so it won't do anything. So we're just going to go for pure damage here. Good. Hellmasters are also good at dodging. He will most likely be killed this turn, so I didn't want to take this as a chance to heal. Critical heal is just what we're looking for. going and this time I'm going to mark him. What it's going to do is set him up to take more damage from the Houndmaster and it has reduced his protection to 13% as opposed to 33. And we could do that again and debuff him a second time and get him down to zero if we wanted to. But this should be more than enough to finish him off. That's right, target our heaviest guy. For the Leper to dodge an attack is nothing but a miracle. So now he does extra damage, and you're dead. And because it's dark or shadowy, we're going to get more loot. And driven into the mud. I definitely want to keep that ruby, so goodbye Jade. We have way too much food at this point. We really need everything. but I don't want to take the stress hit if there is indeed a situation for a shovel. Alright, I'm going to have to get rid of the portrait. Oh, that was the end, but we can still keep going. Okay, this one, I don't think there is any curio or any item we can use. I can actually, we can double check this for to some extent, but I don't think there is. Why? Oh wait, I'm sorry, I think this uses the shovel. Nope. Oh well. It's been a while, folks, so let's see what we got. Alright, treasure. And since we are doing so well here, let's push forward one more room. Oh, oh my goodness, that's the one that you need the holy water for. These guys used to be very annoying. But they've debuffed them over time. That one's dead. That one died. Come on, Bolin, do it. Oh, there's the leper miss coming into play. Oh! Nice. 
field himself. It only works on the Houndmaster, unfortunately. A lot of classes will have self heals, but you still will probably need a dedicated healer. Triumphant pride precipitates a All right. If we oil. had holy water, I could use it on this thing, and it has a chance, I believe, of removing a negative quirk. Good thing we have extra food. Ooh. If only treasure could staunch the Not bad. Otherworldly corruption. We don't need the food anymore. I know this room is safe. Will we get a another scout? Perfect. Alright, well. I can use this as an excuse to get some free stress relief. 80, 70, yeah. It'll be on you. And once more. And now, the darkness holds dominion. Ooh. Isn't Black that interesting? Is that gives me a crazy idea. We don't need this. Also, if you remember from the last play when I met the Shambler, if you walk around in zero light or in darkest, there is a chance for him to spawn. So what I'm going to do now for the interest of science and hopefully not getting killed I'm going to show you what the holy water will do on that item or on that curio so it will remove one negative quirk the question is does anyone have one that I really want to get rid of fear of the unholy is annoying but not oh my god bad that can be a pain It's a toss-up between maybe getting Flawed Release or Hylomania. I'm going to go for Hylomania, so we'll use the Holy Water. Oh, no, it gave him a positive quirk. But a really damn good one. Plus three critical on range. Because most of his skills are actually of the range variety, the only one that's actually considered melee is the Blackjack. That's really good. When you combine it with other buffs, that would be great. If we get any skills that boost range damage, that would be even better. But we are certainly done here. This has been a successful mission. Driving out corruption is an endless battle, but one that must be fought. Okay. That could be a pain to get, that could be one we want to get rid of. This is really useful for the leper. Not bad. And that is not good. Now some classes who already have low dodge, it doesn't mean much to get clumsy. But if we get that on a highwayman or something else, it's really bad. Barely whispered aloud by now, she's cured, but now she's addicted to alcohol. He's now a mediator for... <laughs> for meditating, so that's good. And we have some much-needed deeds. The sanitarium is now open. This is where we can lock good quirks, remove bad ones, and remove any diseases. So if I want to get rid of Kleptomania, I would come here and spend the money. And we can increase and do stuff like that. Alright, so as always, first thing we want to do is come here and see who we have. And uh, no. Arbalist is another really good one. But she already suffers from one less crit. Stress faster, that is really great for helping with hunger. We finally have the Abomination. And the Bounty Hunter. Hmm. Not bad. Bounty Hunter is really good at moving the enemy around as well as targeting multiple guys. 
the Bounty Hunter, Arbalist, and the Hellmaster, and I believe now the Highwayman, are the ones that are, get bonuses for fighting marked targets. The Abomination is a special unit who basically can transform into a monster, so he has access to three skills as a human, three skills as a monster. Holy characters will not go with him in a party, so Vestal, Crusader, and Leper will not be with him. We have a lot of good ones. With him, not so much. At this point, we really don't need to upgrade the Stagecoach Network just yet. But it may be time to upgrade that. First thing, though, I really want to get one of these to rank 2. So... I'm going to replace him, because he has nothing I really need. We'll this take the Bounty Hunter, Useless. the Abomination, that plus accuracy is really good. Hmm. I really do want Battle Ballad, but I also want this Arbalist. Her mark reduces dodge. The Hellmaster reduces protection. And his reduces protection, but not as strong. Hmm. Do I really... Do I, uh, we don't have any other Crusaders, so I'm going to have to keep him for right now. Trying to see how I want to build him. I don't want to let this Arbalist go to waste. She definitely needs to rest. Like I said, you really want at least one dedicated healer. So either the Occultist or the Vestal. Unless you're building very specific parties. So it's good to keep her protected. You only have one. Plague Doctor. Usually you just want one of everyone. Hmm. This combination... I do want this. It's not really meant to use for the finale. Tiger's Eye is a really good one, as you can see. Mm -mm -mm. If I'm going to do this, I need to... Yeah. I'm afraid I'm going to have to drop Anzare. Those without the stomach for this place must move on. Take her. And what I'm going to do is give Vil here the Bow Ballad. Okay, that's good. Take that off, put this on, place that with this. That should be good. If I pair him with the Abomination, I would want to put Inspiring Tune. Alright, what's our time? Yeah, we're about 40 minutes in, so we're going to wrap up today's play here. So, we'll do a preparation for next time. We've unlocked the remaining two areas. The Warrens is a disease-ridden area with a lot of bleeds and status effects. The cove is another nasty one, but it has some very powerful curios 
for removing bad quirks. But you need to be really careful there because the enemies can hit hard. It's also one other thing. This is where the Plague Doctor is very useful. This one, not so much. As these enemies will do a lot of bleed. While these tend to do more blight and disease. At this point, it's more about what they're offering. Now, that would be really nice for our Jester. But again, we do need Deeds. So for this kind of setup, he has this, the pull, push, and the stun. like that. She can snipe. The Arbalist is really only useful in the back row, in the third or fourth position. Do we have any real stuns? If he's going to be back here. To do a guard dog. <laughs> Actually, you can switch them around. And the abomination is pretty much in his best position in position two. It lets him make use of all of his skills without needing to move around. We put him up here, he loses Hound's Rush. We put him in position 1, he really doesn't lose anything. Well, this should certainly be interesting. And he'll kind of synergize for, to some extent. But these three will play off of their marks pretty damn well. But we will have to save that until next time. That is all good for him. I have nothing that protects against disease, which kind of sucks, but we'll just have to deal. This has been locked in, unfortunately, which means it's going to be harder to get rid of unless we get lucky with a curio. Now, what was the one that I really need to get rid of? Who had it? Not you. We will want to get rid of that. I think it was the one that we just got rid of. Alright. But we are on our way. Completing this one will get us enough deeds to do our first upgrade, which will allow us to level up our characters at the blacksmith. And like I said, we'll go a few episodes. We won't go, you know, all the way in the game, but we'll see what happens. So, thanks so much for watching this play of the Darkest Dungeon. Be sure to, of course, like and subscribe if you enjoy it. Share with your friends if they are needing some help. And once again, I'm Josh Blaser from GameWisdom.com. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you all next time with, I guess, this will be part four. Take care. Thanks for watching the video, everybody. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, of course, share with your friends. It always helps out. Check out Game-Wisdom.com, where I examine the art and science of games. You can follow me on Twitch and Twitter under GWBicer for the latest updates of new content. And be sure to check out our Patreon campaign. You can find us on Patreon under Game Wisdom. If you would like to donate and help contribute to keeping Game Wisdom going, 
Your donations can not only give us the monthly funding we need to keep supporting ourselves, but if we can hit some goals, it will mean more great content for you. And there are some nifty little rewards there as well. Thanks again for watching this video, and be sure to tune into the next one real soon.